Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gaming Token here, welcome to a sum up video with timeline on the Reconquista, uh, I finished the achievement. I did not post uh, episodes after the war with Aragon and Austria when I secured my northern border, there wasn't anything interesting happening, it's just the continuation of the same, conquer mainland Iberia, take uh, last province Balias from Tunis and that's it. And it was a foregone conclusion, so nothing really interesting. Now, uh, before I jump to timeline, a few notes on my idea group choices. I took exploration first, then aristocratic. It was a close call between aristocratic and defensive. Both have their benefits. I just personally prefer aristocratic. Uh, I just have a thing for cavalry uh, early game, and this idea is just amazingly good. Uh, tech cost is nice as well, it makes it really uh, economic to take aristocratic, J just my taste. So uh, I took exploration first because uh, I was really behind on tech. Uh, as Granada you have a really bad start tech wise because you have a like 110 ruler. And Renaissance is far and you are dirt poor so it's difficult to really catch up. And you can't really afford advisors. So I took exploration with the hope of getting uh, institution in my uh, country. And to get uh, colonialism, because that's the institution I was aiming for, you need to discover a new world. So I took it first to discover a new world, have a quest for the new world embraced. And lo and behold, I got uh, colonialism, which was uh, really beneficial and helped me to kick up my uh, performance. Other than that, this was purely combat choice. I had a lot of difficult wars in Iberia. This is what you expect when you do this achievement. Expansion is just to help uh, solidify my position as a colonial superpower. Offensive and diplomatic were just uh, continuation. Offensive in particular is valuable for siegeability. Now, this is the first run I've done with Cradle of Civilization, so I had to get used to army professionalism, and it's amazing. And there's a really nice video by Remens Paradox about uh, army professionalism, so I suggest you watch it. Now, this is my income uh, tab. I should show it as well. Uh, this is basically what you're going to rely on financially. Trade it will become probably your mo main income source. I decided to focus on Sevilla and not Genoa because... Uh, Taking control over Genoa was not a part of my agenda. Uh, I wanted to take over Iberia and focus on colonies, so Sevilla is good enough as long as I can prevent too much uh, money leak forward. Uh, 10 is a lot, but oh, well, I, I find it acceptable. Anyway, besides that, my production income is poor at this stage of the game. It's really, really poor. And, uh, Andalusia is not a production superpower. Tax income falls off as it's expected. And it's still decent. Uh, tariffs are awesome. The main uh, income so income nation from tariffs is uh, Caribbean uh, region. It's insanely valuable. I push tariffs as high as possible. Uh, this is amazing. If you have an uh, event that gives you prestige, and you can uh, push it up to 100 and waste some. Always take plus 8 local rulers for your most valuable colonial nation. If you have single, if you have several, well then, um, juggle it around. And just push those tariffs higher. Uh, look, just look at it, this, this number is impressive. Uh, additionally, I control tra slave trade goods, so that also increases my income considerably. And income is what fuels your economy for warfare. Now, uh, that's the end result. Let's get uh, straight to timeline, okay? Excuse me, Tab, thank you. So, this is the start. Uh, the start is very difficult for Granada. This is the main difficulty of this achievement. The good thing is that the, your entire country are mountains, and mountains are very good to defend in. So focus on units with defensive advantages, and survive. Now, uh, in the beginning, you need allies. Morocco is the preferred ally. You should ally them always. Uh, without Morocco, this round is, I think, uh, I wouldn't say impossible because there's not, nothing is impossible in your EU4 if you put your heart to it, right? Uh, but it certainly is difficult. So, when I started, I allied Morocco 
which was pretty lucky for me. And if I recall correctly, uh, Spain has gone to Castile, excuse me, has gone to war with uh, me and Morocco. And uh, it was Clamenca and Tunis. I can't remember which of the two. You have to check out yourself in the first video of the series. And uh, when you start, the biggest problem, for me at least, is money. Because your ruler is bad, you can't really change it. Uh, it's, of course, it's preferable if you have a really competent heir. But you're dead poor. Now, there are two provinces that you really want to take in your first conflict with Castile. If you can't take them, it's awesome. If you can't, just focus on one. The biggest priority is this, is Villa uh, Sevilla. It is a center of trade. It's an estuary. If I remember correctly, you need this. It will increase your trade income uh, twofold, threefold, something like that. As soon as you make it a uh, state area and you give it to merchant guilds, uh, autonomy falls off for uh, trade power generation and you start to getting uh, to get in some money which then you can use to leverage your poor uh, monarch port gain now renaissance will be a pain to get uh, you'll need to hope that uh, the aragonese are not too hostile towards you uh, well no never mind it will be difficult just getting renaissance will take time and uh, that time is difficult so this was my first war, uh, successful war against Castile. They attacked uh, Tunis and Tlamencan as well as I think I attacked them with Morocco. Uh, was it the other way around? They attacked me and just Tunis and Tlamencan joined in. Anyway, uh, perfect start. You can't hope for anything more than this. Uh, they also had a war with Aragon, as you can see. At the same time, the Aragonese attacked a little later. So they got squashed like a bug. I took uh, Sevilla, which is super valuable, and I took Almansha. Now, Almansha is important because it's producing gold. And that's that. Uh, you want to take it and you want to develop it to a point where it's uh, not too developed, but it's just perfect, the right amount. Uh, for me, 10 production value for gold mines is the sweet spot uh, at uh, early mid-game because it really makes it unlikely to deplete and you don't want to deplete a gold mine so Almansha and this villa is the key at the early stage of the game after that you have the means to really fight uh, fair and square and not only rely on your allies to save you now important fact Granada produces salt which increases its defensiveness it's mountainous province and if you have Mandate of Heaven, of course, you can place local defensiveness edict. So without big effort, you can get like 90% defensiveness, something like that. Uh, just be patient in wars and let your enemy fight against uh, your fort in your capital and make them bleed for it. Attrition damage is amazing and it really uh, saved me in war with Aragon, which was the next difficult conflict. Let's speed this up a little bit. So after this initial ep uh, period, I really had to uh, get control of the rebels because it wasn't easy. Now as you can see Portugal took that. Aragon had the next war with uh, Castile and Aragon has become a really big issue for me in this game. They were my greatest enemy. Now as you can see I uh, used the opportunity and I take Toulouse, El Balat and uh, Jayan. Now Toulouse uh, or is important because there's a fort here and you want that fort for yourself it's grassland so it's not optimal defensive wise when it comes to terrain but it's important to have some border security perhaps placing additional fort in your gold mine is a good idea as well come to think of it i think defensive ideas are better early game than uh, aristocratic ones but it's just my preferred playstyle. I was still very heavily behind in tech uh, despite the fact that i could afford advisors on some reasonable level now, this was interesting. Morocco has assaulted Portugal in a conflict and they took uh, Septa, the Straits of Gibraltar and the southern coast, southernmost province in uh, uh, Portugal. Now, the thing is, if you want to form Andalusia as Granada, you need to take entire Andalusian culture, which is uh, this. 
Isbilla, uh, Cordoba, uh, Jayan, Mercia, and your starting provinces, uh, as well as Cadiz. But there's also additional uh, requirement. You need to have uh, this and this. This is Valencia. I don't remember how this is called and not showed in uh, Almansha language. Excuse me, not Almansha, but uh, uh, Andalusian language. So need, either you need those two provinces or these two provinces. So since this was taken by Morocco, my ally, I did want, not want to antagonize them. So I, ha I was thinking that it might take a while to actually form uh, Andalusia, and it did. Uh, so yeah, in this game, France was super weak. Uh, it was, which was quite interesting. Uh, luckily, Aragon did not. Uh, Castile did not choose to bind the dynasty uh, with Aragonese, and uh, that meant that uh, Aragon did not fall under their control in, uh, in an Iberian wedding. So right now, in uh, just before colonialism, uh, I was starting to discover new world. As you can see, I took uh, the Canaries from uh, Spain as well. Uh, Morocco took Madeira and the Azores are still Portuguese as well as Cape Verde so at this stage I was starting to think about colonizing I think uh, because you see the thing is that in Iberia you have a limited amount of development and you need to use your development in order to outperform enemy uh, the higher the difficulty the more difficult it is because well the more resources the enemy has out of their development and it's cheaper for them to get development now, this was unfortunate. Uh, Morocco took Lisbon in the war, which was really against my plans. I wanted to do it, but they were faster. And it screwed me over because Lisbon and Sevilla are the important provinces in Sevilla trade node. Uh, which was my main trade node and it was unfortunate, but you know, well, uh, shit happens. And sometimes you just need to uh, adapt. Now, the, the big problem was Aragon for me. I knew they would attack me. They took quantity ideas and they were rich, so they had a lot of resources. This is my first colonies, as you can see. Colony. And getting colonies will be really important. It's a big upfront investment, uh, but it will really pay off. As I showed you, income tab, it was amazing to see. And the value was big. It's difficult to get allies as Granada outside of Morocco. Uh, Ottomans are, of course, the go to big daddy. But they don't come easily, unfortunately. So yeah, now there was a piece, uh, a period of relative peace. As you know, I have got colonialism, so I was up to tech. And uh, yeah, uh, this uh, was an actually a uh, period of relative peace. This was an extremely difficult war with Aragon. They had the numbers, they had the advantage. Uh, it was long and arduous. But it wasn't the hardest one. Uh, the French has actually joined, as you can see, uh, from the north. And they used uh, Aragon uh, being weakened. So I took some land from them when I have managed to exhaust their manpower. Mainly through cavalry charges in the fort of Granada. Uh, Toulouse went from hand to hand several times. and You know, it's really good to secure your most important provinces when you play as Granada, which is Almansha and Lisbon. And... Uh, Granada, really. Uh, this is the place where you want to fight most of your full battles uh, when you are relieving siege because it will give you tremendous value. It's very difficult to take. You have time. The enemy will take ridiculous attrition damage. Go defensive. As you can see, I continued colonizing rather well. That three colonies already so in a colonial nation, right? I took uh, Azores from... Uh, Portugal in a war earlier when you're doing uh, La Reconquista try not to forget about those uh, islands you need Azores Madeira and the Canaries because they are part of Iberia apparently also uh, Mallorca uh, the Balears are a part of Iberia keep that in mind so, yeah, uh, Morocco got into another war with Portugal. They destroyed it. I had another war with Gra uh, Aragon. It was difficult. I took Portugal as my vassal at some point. But I continued expanding into colonies. It was starting to become... Uh, what's the term? Uh, an avalanche. A snowball effect. Uh, because the colonies started to pay off. 
So the continuation of the colonial development was logical. Portugal has become my vassal. I was starting to think about Africa at this point. I broke my alliance with Morocco. I took what was important to me, which was Lisbona and Septa, so I controlled the Straits. And yeah, this was uh, the crucial part. Also, Plemenken was my vassal. I forgot to say that. I vassalized them, and frankly, it's good to have... It's, it's one of the options. You can either uh, win your first war against uh, Castile, which will attack you, if you have Morocco as your ally, it's uh, possible to do, but it requires uh, good control. Or you can jump to North Africa and just escape uh, Iberia at the start of the game, go colonial, get back uh, and take it back from them. This is the less optimal way. I chose to fight and fight I did. The problem with uh, Berber nations, which is Morocco, Flamenca and Tunis, those little states here that Tunis always eats, is the fact that they have co-creation of 50% uh, increased cost. So it's really expensive to call this land as yourself. And that's 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 not really optimal. Anyway, uh, Flamenca was a really useful vassal. Uh, Aragon used part of the forces to just uh, visit them and they died uh, because they couldn't go back because I controlled uh, the Straits of Gibraltar. Uh, it was a really funny naval battle where enemy almost had twice the numbers, but we won regardless. Now, uh, as you can see, we are doing really fine in the Caribbean. I think we took some provinces from uh, colonies, excuse me, from England. It wasn't that difficult. The English weren't doing too good at this stage. They got a little better after a while. But, yeah, as you can see, Scotland is independent, uh, Ireland is independent. Funny thing, uh, the French have joined the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, yeah, this was the moment when I gave back some cores to Portugal as I was annexing them. So, uh, good job, I suppose. It reduces some cost on my side. Also, uh, Madeira and the Azores, apparently. And that will allow me to just annex them straight on. So... so cheap and easy. Uh, the French had become the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire at one point in this game. Uh, Austria was uh, just a joke. And after the French, uh, the Irish had actually become uh, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. They had amazing leaders. I was just shocked just how good they are. And at this stage, as you can see, after annexing Portugal and taking Galicia, the only thing will be Aragon. Aragon was in a personal union with Austria, which was quite amusing. And uh, fighting Aragon would require me to fight Austria, which was quite expensive and arduous. But I did it nonetheless. And that's uh, the moment, uh, as you can see. The last 50 years, uh, 46 years, will be mainly about uh, expanding our colonial reach. As you can see, we already moved to Cape. Cape was producing gold, which is fun because it's seven production at start. That's that's a lot. And at this stage, we control Mexico. We start to control Mexico, at least. Uh, this section, Mississippi, not the best uh, trade node, actually. Rio Grande is better because you can push more money through Mexico and the Caribbean to increase its net value via trade. And yeah, at this point, we were the superpower. Next war will be with Aragon and Austria, and it will allow me to take the rest, I think. The French were, we, we were having a bad day. Uh, they were being kicked by nerves of all the people, and Sardinia, Piemont. You don't see that every day, so that was amusing. Another war with Morocco, and I suppose this is it. Let's just speed up a tiny little bit because there's nothing that much happening. Just for your information, I moved colonially here. As you can see, had a war with Malindi to take this coastline, Zanzibar coastline. I took Zanzibar and Mobasa, the trade centers in Zanzibar trade mode, uh, trade node, as to start pushing money uh, towards Cape and then back to Sevilla. It's the usual. I also mo made colonies in Indian area so that I could get the East uh, India Trading Company uh, option, which gives you a free merchant. It's always good to have, right? And our control of Americas is established. At this point, I think we could even go World Conquest with this run. But uh, I have to say, I did not enjoy it as much uh, as I thought I would. Colonial management is such a, a dragging bore to me. Uh, as you can see, we took the rest. Now it's only uh, this. 
Mallorca, it will be easy to take from Tunis, they really can't uh, comp compete with my navy. And that's that. It's a mine. And after quarrying this, I got uh, Rare Conquista, because the entirety of Iberia was mine. Remember about those tiny isles. So, a sum up of the run. Uh, early game is of course the most difficult part. Use your... beginning provinces, which is Jabal, Tariq, Ga uh, Granada and Maria. These are mountainous regions. This is particularly good. Uh, now my defensiveness is super low, actually. But if I deploy local defensiveness edict, it makes it much higher. Also, use Islam to your favor. Get uh, mysticism early game. As much mystic as you possible. If you have an event that increases mysticism, take it. It's usually worth it. Fault, defense, morale of armies and missionary strength. All you need at all early game. You just need to uh, get mysticism. Legalism, uh, unfortunately, is being uh, passively added to you whenever you fight Christians in an offensive war. And it sucks. Uh, but, oh, well, what can you do? Well, you can attack uh, friendly, uh, friendly neighbors. Uh, Muslims, but it's not the best strategy, I think. Uh, just try to keep as mystical as possible. Regarding uh, your school of Islam, Maliki, uh, not good, not good. 10% development is not awesome as Granada. You won't be playing tall, so it's not really valuable. And yeah, to make it easier, take defensive and just bleed enemy dry on your capital fort uh, whenever they attack. Enemy, uh, the AI actually in this patch likes to go pretty yellow, so use this to your advantage and just let them kill themselves via attrition. And that's that. Also, important thing, drill when you can't afford it. Early game, it's not really worth it, I think. Uh, when you get uh, Sevilla, Almansha, it starts to get valuable. Just drill. And use that to recover your manpower. It isn't actually the best uh, strategy. Uh, the best way to use drilling is to get 80% uh, ASAP. You can't really afford it as a Granada early game, so that's a problem. Because at 80% prof professionalism, you have cheaper generals. And that allows you to pay 125 uh, military points by buying 5 generals in order to get uh, 2 years worth of manpower. It's a good deal, trust me. And of course, when you can't afford it, start thinking about promoting your advisors. Uh, you should be able to afford it via trade and tariffs. There's also one more thing I want to talk about with Granada, which I found particularly interesting. Uh, the ideas are pretty nice. Uh, this is nice. Core creation cost really made it easier to, on my admin side, to just call back everything I need for the achievement. But uh, this is what I wanted to talk about. I never really uh, valued construction costs that much. Uh, it never. It, it, I always view it as uh, nice, but not super nice. But uh, since I took uh, aristocratic, uh, excuse me, aristocratic ideas and expansion ideas, I got access to a policy uh, manoline architecture, which reduces construction costs by additional fifteen percent. And since I thought to myself I'm being kind of bored, it's getting kind of boring to just colonize, wait for truce with Aragon and then fight another war, let's just try it out. And I was surprised just how impactful it turned out to be. Uh, so with these two I have minus 25% construction cost. So that makes a workshop that costs 100 ducats, uh, 75 ducats. You, you basically earn 25 ducats on your workshop. It's huge. Uh, it hit me when I started to develop my provinces by building manufacturers in particular. Also, I had a visionary architect leader at one point, not this one certainly, which gave me minus 35% building cost. So just check out, and of course you get to uh, have Renaissance, which reduces this by 5%. But uh, right now I have uh, two modifiers, my ideas, which is 10%, and policy, which is 25% total. 
and Renaissance, which is a 30% cost reduction. And just look, I pay 70 ducats for a workshop. It's a big reduction. It's It saves you so much money. It's just incredible. I, I realized this uh, while I was playing, and I will certainly respect construction cost reduction a lot more uh, in the game in the future. Just look at pricing of those manufacturers. That's dirt cheap in comparison to base stats. Even better. Now, this is uh, the funny part. I also uh, realized that tropical wood uh, reduces uh, construction costs in the province where tropical wood is found by 20%. So, 257 for manufacturing, that's just pathetically cheap. Uh, strategic goods, I, as you can see, control sugar, slaves, ivory, cocoa, coffee. Well, I should be controlling gold because I produce a lot of it, but never mind about that. Uh, all of these are nice. Uh, cocoa coffee comes from Mexico. Sugar as well, of course, uh, from Caribbean. They are the production leader and, leader and I made them. Uh, I think I'm the second production facility. You know, uh, it doesn't show. Uh... This is actually nice, reducing war exhaustion cost is really good. Uh, slaves uh, is incredibly valuable, I hate to say it. If you manage to control slave trade by getting uh, Western African coastline and South African coastline, that's usually to completely enough, even Western African coastline, when you push it to Caribbean and then to Sevilla. Global tariffs 25% with a strong Caribbean uh, nation that gives you tariffs uh, Nets in 61 uh, ducats in total from my states, and as I showed, uh, Caribbean pays me 38 uh, tariffs, with them not being too too high. Ivory is just a cherry on top. Diplo Rep plus two, it's a huge bonus. It's like idea group from Diplo or Influence. Uh, this is just uh, this is just cute. Okay, this is just cute and uh, not that valuable. So that's that. Uh, this is my trade status. Excuse me, these are the money sounds because you might be interested. Flowing, 21 to Ivory Coast. I send it to Caribbean, uh, as, and not directly to Sevilla. So Caribbean is worth a lot. I send 43 ducats from Caribbean forward. Uh, not the most, actually. Uh, 37 myself. Not the most. A uh, lot is staying because uh, the, the Caribbeans, right? They just have a lot of trade power. And they just use it to leave some of it here. Same goes with Mexico. So yeah, that's that. So, all in all, uh, 60 ducats are arriving. And that generates a lot of income. So that's that. Uh, thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this achievement wasn't particularly long, but I couldn't make a regular uh, posting schedule uh, due to uh, real life uh, turns and up upsides and downsides. So it happens. Uh, give me a shout, what do you want to see next? Uh, I was thinking about Dracula's Revenge, which will be us playing an orthodox state, something new, or perhaps around the world in eight years. This is a difficult one and certainly a challenging one. If you have other ideas, uh, give me a shout. And thank you for your time and attention. Uh, see you again soon. Gaming took out. Bye bye.